Edgar Wright. I enjoy watching Edgar Wright's movies. I enjoyed watching Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. That movie is my jam. That's my favorite movie of his. I enjoyed watching The World's End. I enjoy all of his movies. Baby Driver. Every time Edgar Wright comes out with a movie, I'm there. So when I saw the trailer for Last Night in Soho, I was like, eh, I don't know if I want to watch that. But knowing that Edgar Wright was the director of this project, I said, okay, I'm down for this. And I watched it. And to me, Last Night in Soho is an interesting movie. It starts off with Thomas and Mackenzie as Eloise. And the directing off the bat is mwah. It's fantastic. Like she opens the door and she's dancing. You hear this music playing. You see the opening credits. It's great. And we follow Eloise as a character on her journey. And she wants to be a designer. And I enjoyed Thomas and Mackenzie in this movie. I enjoyed her performance. She was believable as this character. I felt the anxiety that she felt in the scenes where she was panicking and she didn't know exactly what to do. And immediately you, you get a you get a feeling for the world that she is in. Like she has this vision of what she wants to do. Then she meets these people and there's this one character, I don't remember the character's name or the actress's name. But she's very mean to Eloise. Like off the bat, you're like this character is a total bitch. I don't like this character. This character can go to hell. And then you meet this other character. His character's name is John. I don't know the actor's name. Michael something. I'm not going to try and pronounce it. But you see him. And at first you're think I'm thinking like, okay, all of these characters are shady. Even this Mike, even even this John character. He's shady. I don't know what's going on with him cuz immediately like when Eloise shows up to this this place where she's going to live John is like hey do you need help with your bags and I'm thinking yeah, don't trust him do not trust this guy and so we meet all these characters like we meet Terrence Stamp and he's just this weird guy hanging around town and the interesting part of the movie happens when Eloise goes to sleep and she dreams about Matt Smith and his character's name is Jack she has these dreams, and they're very vivid, and they're magical. And as soon as I saw these scenes take place, I said, holy shit. This looks way better than No Time to Die. I'm sorry. No Time to Die. I like that movie. But hey, what Edgar Wright did with this? Because immediately, like, when Eloise goes in her dream, and we see... I can't remember what Bond movie it was. It's in the trailer. But we see you know, just this 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 whole feeling of, of this time period and I feel it and we see the lights and it doesn't look like a movie set. It looks like they actually went back in time and shot this. This does not feel like a movie set at all. I was mesmerized by this. I was like, bro, Edgar Wright needs to direct the Bond movie. Like, give Edgar Wright a Bond movie. Like, bro, give Edgar Wright a Bond movie because this movie visually looked better than No Time to Die. I'm sorry. So, like, you know, she goes in her dreams. We meet Jack, who's played by Matt Smith, and he's, you know, very charming. And I just, I just, I was in it. I was in it. I felt the, the vibrant nature of all this and the scenery. It didn't feel like a movie set. It looked real. I was in it. But then I just started, as the movie progressed, I kept thinking, okay, these are just dreams. What is the point of all this? Then there's this other character. Don't know the actress's name. Don't remember the character's name. But I think her name was Sandy. Because there's, the, there's, there's a character in this, like Anna Taylor Joy plays this character. And, you know... In the trailer, you see the reflection, and she's supposed to, like, Eloise is supposed to be Sandy. And in the trailer, I was like, how is this going to work out? And in the movie, it's just basically, you know, Sandy is 
Eloise's avatar in this world. So she's navigating as El- as Sandy through this world. And it's cool and it's fun and it's vibrant and I love it and it looks real and it feels real. But it goes on for so long to the point where I'm like, what is the point of all this? Like, what is happening here? And then when the layers start to peel back, I say to myself, okay, this is just, there's just, there's so much happening here. And it makes sense because the movie sets it up. But by the end of it all, I'm just like, this, this is kind of like, I don't care. You know, like visually, it's impressive. It's stunning. It's mesmerizing. Give Edgar Wright a freaking Bond movie. Let him do it because this is just the visuals look fantastic. None of this feels like a movie set. Like I said, so vibrant, so vibrant. Like, oh, my God, I wish I was her back in that time period. It's so amazing. And the performances all the way around are fantastic. But just like the story and its execution, like at first it's like, okay, I'm following Eloise. I'm interested in her character. I enjoy watching her on screen, seeing her interact with all the other characters like the bitch. You know, I'm like, fuck that character. And then she meets John and I'm like, don't trust him. You know, but eventually I like John. Then she meets this old lady and I'm just like, okay. Then she meets Terrence Stamp's character and I'm like, okay. What's happening? And it just goes on and on and on. And then it finally reveals itself. And by the end, I'm just like, it just turns into some generic, like, slasher film. You know, like, there's all this intrigue at the beginning. And it goes on and on and on. And I'm just like, what's happening? Where is this going? And when it reaches its con- conclusion, I'm just sit- I'm just sitting there like, really? Like, you could- I- this movie could have done so much better. It could have done so much better. Overall, my verdict for this movie is it's it's a good movie. It's a good movie. It's fun. It's it's very thematic. There are, there are there are lots of great performances all across the board. The visuals are fantastic. The dream sequences are the star of the show. Cinematography's great. Set design's great. Everything like the makeup, the design, the sets. It doesn't feel like a set. It feels real, bro. Like, holy shit. Like, Edgar Wright, man. Like, props to him. Because visually, this movie is stunning. This movie is absolutely stunning. But the execution of the story, to me, is just... It's not that interesting. I mean, it's interesting. Let I correct myself. The story is interesting to a point. Like, at the beginning, I'm intrigued. And in the middle of the, of the story, I'm like, where is this going? Get to get to the point already. And then by the end, when it does reveal itself, I'm just like kind of meh about it. You know, like, oh, it could have been better. It could have been done differently. I don't like the way this was executed, you know, by the end of it all. But I enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed it. It was a good movie. It was a very good movie for the visuals, the acting, and the performances. And it did hold my attention because I wanted to know what was happening. But once it reveals itself, like I said, it's just, man, it's just like, man, this could have been done so much better. So that's my non-spoiler review. So spoiling this shit, it's like, all right, Eloise wants to be a, a designer And she meets this bitch character who's just constantly mean to her. That goes nowhere. Like, this character meets her and she's just like, you know, constantly putting Eloise on the spot. Talking about, oh yeah, your parents' suicide. Oh, my parents committed, or whoever in her family committed suicide. She's just constantly bugging her and I hate her character. There's one scene where Eloise, like, has these visions of these ghosts who were these men who were, like, sexually, you know, abusing uh, Sandy's character by Anna Taylor Joy, and you know she puts the knife up to this character's face, and it goes nowhere. Like the bitch character goes nowhere. It goes nowhere. It, it's 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 pointless. Then the John character, he, I like him. I like him. Like I always say in a movie, like hey, you know when someone gets killed or something or gets hurt, make us care about them. And with John, I care about him. Even though they really didn't do anything with him. It was just like he shows up. I was suspicious of him because I'm like, don't trust any of these people. But genuinely, John was a nice guy. 
John was a nice guy. You know, he keeps showing up in, in Eloise's life. And he's just like, let me help you. Let me be there for you. And then he is that kind of guy. And there was one scene where it was really cool. They go to this club and they're wearing this face paint. And it's very like, you know, just like club scene. And I love it. And they go back to Eloise's place where she's she's staying at with the old lady. And John, you know, he's about to have sex with Eloise after trying to like get with her for so long. And... Eloise starts freaking out because she starts seeing these visions of, of, of Sandy, the younger version of Sandy being killed. And in that moment, I was like, bruh, this is fucked up because he's black. And I'm just like, the old lady comes up. She's banging on the door. I thought they were seriously going to set him up. Like, oh, man, he's going to get killed because he's black. And she's claiming, like, you know, it's kind of like a rape situation. Like, his pants are down. And she's screaming, and the old lady's upstairs banging on the door. I'm like, oh, this is bad for him. This is going to go south because he's black. And it's like, she's just, oh, shit. So I was, in, I was like, holy shit, but that scene didn't go anywhere. He, he eventually got his name cleared. And he's, he's ultimately a good guy, which is great. Because then by the end, you know, when Eloise figures out that the old lady she's renting the room from is the older version of Sandy. And... You know, Sandy turns out to be this crazed killer who killed all these men. So the reason why the ghost men are here torturing her is not because they're trying to torture her. It's because they want help, which made sense, you know. And so then Sandy tries to, she, you know, she poisons Eloise. And then John comes in like, hey, I want to see Eloise. And then he gets stabbed. So I'm like, all right, you know, you were building him as a nice guy. And then he gets hurt. And so I care about him. But I do wish there was a little bit more going on with him. Because then the twist is like, okay, first she's, when she when she has these dreams with Jack, which is fucked up, because Jack is like, she chooses Jack and her dreams over John in reality, which was interesting. And then so she, she constantly goes in her dreams with Jack, and you see the Sandy character by Anna Taylor-Joy, the younger version of Sandy. And, you know, she's, she's like, you know, I want to be a singer. And it's an interesting story. Like, I really wish this movie had just focused on Sandy. This movie should have just been about Anna, Ta- Anna Taylor-Joy as Sandy, the younger version, and then seeing what she went through. Because that was the most interesting part of the movie. Like, I did enjoy Thomas and McKenzie and her performance as Eloise. But then when, once we get into those to these flashbacks... That's the most interesting part of the movie. And once it's all revealed that the the lady that Eloise is renting from is the actual killer here, that's the most interesting part of the movie. Like, I really wish this movie just had been a straightforward movie about Sandy and her meeting Jack and getting involved with him and then him treating her like shit. Because all that stuff is interesting as fuck, like... You know, what he did to her and how she had to sleep with all these guys and then she's just doing drugs. She just goes off the deep end into the rabbit hole. Like, that shit was like, that shit hit me like, oh, this is sad. Because the the reveal of, like, first she wants to be a singer, she meets Jack, and you're thinking, oh, yeah, Jack's going to help her out. And then all of a sudden, when Eloise goes back into her dream, you see Sandy and she's just a backup singer and dancer for this one lady. So I was like damn. And then you see her just sleeping with these dudes and shit. And it's fucked up. And then she's like sick of it. And she's just getting wasted. Just losing herself. And then you see Eloise trying to like. Look at me. Look at me. And trying to break her out. Like I felt that. You know emotionally. But I really wish. Just like seeing all that. I really wish. just This just had been a Sandy movie. Like this should have just been a straightforward movie. Taking place in that time period. Showing Sandy going through her turmoil and then the older version of 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 sandy who's the old lady and didn't do a sequel and didn't do a sequel with eloise and her coming in and all this stuff because it's like once eloise like eloise is going through her her stuff then she goes to this house rents it from this lady and then it's not until she sleeps in the bed where she has all these visions she sees all these male ghosts and she's living sandy's life so she has this psychic connection to Sandy 
You can say that it's the male ghosts who are putting this in her head, who are putting these visions in her head, making her see all this stuff. But it's just kind of like, it's just kind of odd. Like, it's just kind of poorly executed to me. Because it's like, like I said, I'm more interested in Sandy's story more so than Eloise once we get into Sandy's, you know, life here. Because once we learn Sandy, I'm like, what's going on? Is this just a dream? And then we learn the twist that, hey, the old lady is actually Sandy and she actually killed these men. And these men are ghosts trying to ask for help and all this stuff. So I thought all that stuff was interesting. But then the execution of it, it's just like, by the end, it's just kind of lame. It's like, oh, this old lady's the villain. And she's Sandy and she actually killed all these men. And all these ghosts actually are just begging for help. And then the, the, the worst part of this movie is when... Terrence Stamp, he's this mysterious guy. And there's this one dream where we see Sandy and she's talking to this guy. And, it's just, and I, I really enjoyed this moment in the movie where it's like she's just sleeping with men and different dudes. They don't even care what her name is. They're just like, oh, that's a nice name. And she's just using a fake name. And she's like, whatever. And there's this one guy who was a cop. And we kind of blow it off. But then they come back to it when she sees Terrence Stamp again. And she's thinking that Terrence Stamp is the older version of Jack. So she confronts him, and I'm even on her, I'm, I'm like in the movie, like, whole, like is he really Jack? It'd be kind of lame if he is Jack, because it's just kind of convenient. You know, like the, old, like the old lady is actually the older version of Sandy, which is kind of convenient. But then it turns out that Terrence Stamp was this cop who was trying to rescue her or whatever. And I was just like, all right, and then he gets hit by a car out of nowhere, and I'm just like, the fuck, you know? It's And it makes sense because they were setting up this whole car thing and, like, two other scenes. Like, there's this one scene where Thomas and Mackenzie's character, Eloise, is like, you know, she's, 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 I can't remember what the scene was, but she was walking, and this taxi cab almost hits her, and the guy's like, get out of the road, and all this stuff. So they set it up once, and then they set it up again later in the movie, where, you know, she's running and it's raining and his cab almost hits her. And the second time they did it, I was like, man, come on. But then they have the payoff where Terrence Stamp gets run over. And so it makes sense because they set it up earlier. But then I'm just like, that's a lame way for his character to go out. Like, come on, man. Like, this is kind of lame. Like, this, like, the setup was interesting, but the payoff to me was just kind of disappointing. And then you, yeah, you see the older version of Sandy, and she turns out to be a psycho and the and real the real killer here. But then it's kind of sad, you know, because she's like, yeah, the younger version of Sandy did die in that room and all this kind of stuff. So that was sad. So that makes me just wish that this movie just had been a straightforward story about Sandy and her life, because that was the most interesting part of the movie, to me. Like dealing with Eloise was interesting. But then once we learned about Sandy, I was like, I want to know more about that. Like, I was like, Eloise, like, I want to go back into the dream and learn about and learn about Sandy, you know. And so it's like this whole these these male ghosts begging for help and all that reveal twist stuff to me just was a bit disappointing, you know. Like, and then you see John, like I said, you know, he's he's just a good guy, even though I was suspicious about him at first. And you see Matt Smith, who did a great job in this movie. Side note, if they ever make a Max Payne movie, make Matt Matt Smith Max Payne. Because he, de- he totally looks like Max Payne the, from the first video game. Like, make, Mac, make Matt Smith Max Payne. Because he looks like him. Like, he looks like a, a young Max Payne. To- totally cast him. Um, but yeah, you know, like I enjoyed the movie for the most part. Like I said, the visuals were great. The actors performances were great. Cinematography, art direction, set design. It feels real. None of it feels like a set. Totally give Edgar Wright a Bond movie because Edgar Wright is a fantastic director. He's one of my favorites. Anything he comes out with, I'm gonna watch it. But yeah, you know, at the beginning, I was intrigued by the middle of the movie I was kind of bored with it. Like, where is this going? What, what are, what are going to be? What's, what, what are the reveals here? What's going to happen? And then the conclusion of it all, I was just kind of disappointed. I was like, it makes sense because they set all this up, 
you know, they introduce these characters early. They set up the taxi thing and all this kind of stuff. But the payoff of it all just was a little disappointing to me. I was just kind of like, I walked out of the theater like this is kind of lackluster. You know, story-wise. Visually, cinematography, directing-wise, acting-wise, it's superb. But story-wise, is like it has my interest, but by the end of it all, I'm just like, it could have been so much better. It's a good movie. Last Night in Soho is a good movie. It is a good movie, but it could have been better. That's all I have to say. 